kasihan yung kasihan yung tayo laki We know that the magma in the Pacific is starting to move, and this is another sign of that story. By Philippines, there is a subduction system. The Ring of Fire itself has subduction systems there. There's the one by Russia, then you got one by the uh, coast of West Coast. The plates are diving under each other. So when clusters tighten within days to weeks like it's been doing, it means that the plate interface is actively adjusting, sometimes a precursor to a larger rupture nearby. Normally, quakes in the Ring of Fire are, you know, spaced out. Like, let's say one happens now, and then you'll have one happen the next month. You'll have one happen four months later or something like that. That has not been the case lately. And that's why scientists are more concerned about this scenario. And this is why we see more activity starting to just redistribute right away because of this activity shift that is definitely taking place that you should take seriously. If all those glaciers up there melt when it explodes, we are absolutely getting destroyed by the Lahar flows. Look on screen. This simulation shows where the Lahars and the mud flow will actually come out at. That would happen before an eruption. The melting has already begun. That's been confirmed by climatologists. Look out here. All the red areas and all the yellowish is where the mud flow in the Lahars would be at. That would stop highways from being active. It would be a scenario that you want to map out a game plan. But the pitch second crack has been found tearing apart off the Pacific Northwest, the Cascadia subduction zone where the one de Fuca plate is, is slowly breaking apart. This area is off the coast of Vancouver Island, right here, Lamont Dotary Earth Observatory, which is part of Columbia Climate School, identified this off the coast of Vancouver Island in the region of Cascadia, where Juan de Fuca plates are slowly moving. The team has captured a subsurface of the subduction zone tearing itself apart. Just weeks ago, by the Gorda Ridge, there was another tear found on the Cascadia subduction zone. The new slab tear off Vancouver Island redistributes stress along the Cascadia subduction zone. This could mean smaller or more localized quakes directly under Vancouver Island instead of one massive rupture releasing stress on the Cascadia subduction zone. Well, a small earthquake has hit near Vancouver Island this morning. The quake was 3.1 magnitude in size and struck about 13 kilometers north of Sydney. And here's the shift that Canada, Washington, Oregon, California can see. When a subducting slab tears, hot mantle can well upward through the gap. This can increase magma supply to the nearby volcanoes in the Cascade Range and also in the Garibaldi Belt in British Columbia. Just so you can see that, here is the Cascade Range right here. And the most significant ones we're looking at in this zone is the ones we want to be looking for in the next weeks and months. Also, British Columbia, this is where the zone that we're talking about as well. And I find it very interesting that just a month ago, the government of British Columbia said, get ready for volcanic activity. Now we know why they said that. Here's what can happen. The new stress offshore can cause shallow landslides and sediment collapse on the seafloor. I'm gonna just stop right now and hit that subscribe button because we're gonna be getting all the information, tracking this updates that people are not looking at so that you can have early warning systems. So do you know what this means? We just found the tectonic seep zone. And this basically in the future tells us that this is an early warning sign that the crust is fracturing deeper offshore and releasing hydrocarbons and volcanic fluids into the bay okay so this is the west coast watch signs that i have listed that i'm about to give to you because all we have is each other through this 
And this is why as a community, we are very much in hand, giving the warnings out and people are getting these and giving us information so that you can be related to that information. So we're all going to be looking for new ocean bubbling in bays. Let me know also if there's just random fish die offs close to these areas where we mentioned all these changes are going to happen. Uh, looking for oily sheens in the ocean areas that you've never seen before. We're not saying something that's natural, something you haven't seen before. Uh, sudden changes in the tides or unusual currents not linked to storms uh, because these may mean more gases and fluids are rising to the surface because of that tear off the coast. Um, we're also going to be looking for the quakes and stuff like that. We told you we're looking for a five or from a four. If there is increased steam plumes or you're smelling the gas smell, you need to report that in the comments here right away. We need to get all the information, but get video as well because everybody wants to know because everybody will look through the comments of this video and you'll have an early warning there. But then I'll come out with the video so everybody sees the larger picture. Everything that is coming, everything that we already know, it's time for us to really dive deep into preparedness for ourselves because the government is preparing, the military is preparing. That only means that it's time for us to look in the right direction as community here. Before this is over with, you'll have an actionable plan. It, I've looked at the scenario, what they're projecting, and they're saying that you're not going to have certain things within like up to two weeks. It says Oregon Go, with the current preparedness levels of Oregon, we have anticipated without being without services and assistance for at least two weeks, if not longer. When the Cascadia subduction zone earthquake occurs, while this will be difficult to overcome, individuals, business, schools, government, and communities can take steps to prepare. And what we have now is we have islands off that will be isolated, isolated by tsunami events. We're going to show you maps of that. We're also going to give you the chemical exposure that's going to be happening in certain zones. And that's going to be something big that's also going to play a huge factor. So let's look at this right here. If you see this on screen right here, you can see where they have that split zone right next to one de Fuca. It's close to the Gorda Plate. And that's where that big opening breaking apart zone is at. So we're going to give you all this information here. And we need to just sit back and listen to this because this is going to be important. So if we look right here, you see next to Portland, Salem, Medford. This is the zone where a lot of people will be isolated by the tsunami event and we're going to give you the map of that and we're also we want everybody in california to pay attention everybody in canada to pay attention as well let's look at this right here we go to the live map and we zoom in all these little yellow looking areas are where the tsunami would be inundated and you would be isolated and what we notice here is the oregon coast highway will be a zone that is going to be hit with liquefaction and that's going to be something that you got to prepare for right now you got to look at that zone and then realize all these areas and this part right here is important so after this video is over you'll want to come back pause the video and look at if you live in these population zones because this is going to be important here for you to understand you see the highway cut off there is like five instances of the highway cut off by the tsunami isolation zones. And you can see right here, Oregon Coast Highway. Again, like I was saying, that bridge is going to be totally inaccessible. So you're going to be able to figure out a route not going through that highway because it's not going to be something you're going to be able to use. Uh, and that highway extends for a while. So you got to think about that if you're living in California as well, Washington. All that area is not going to be something that's accessible. Um, so your best bet is going to be maybe to find some type of back road, some type of area where you can navigate. And we're going to go into the safe zones here in just a second, because everybody is going to be obviously rushing and rushing, trying to get out of there. So the decision to just go and try to get out of there right away is going to be something that you're going to need to be actionable with between the chemicals. Also off the coastlines, we'll get, we're going to get to that, but let's look at this map right here. Here's another one. So if we come up to Washington, you see the red areas, you see the orange areas, you see the, and so this is for the entire area down. Once you get close to Spokane, this area by Spokane is where there's not much affected zones. And let's give you the numbers of the red here. So that would be one of the safer zones to like move back towards. So in the red zone, we're talking about 
59,823 uh, population affected by shaking. And we're not talking liquefaction yet. We're going to get into that here uh, in just a few. So now let's go to the orange zone. We're talking 25,355 population affected by shaking as well. Now, when we say this, this is the projected numbers right here. And so what we're looking at deeper is this is businesses, this is people's homes, residential, all of it in the same. And so when we go back to the yellow zone, we only have about 12,127 actually says 822 will be affected by shaking. The less shaking is close to Spokane area. So that area is where like right there where Spokane is where the safe zone starts to be the area right there. Once you're in the upper part, that's the safe zone pretty much collapsing. Uh, and you don't want to be too close to that zone either because that's going to be something. Now, let's talk liquefaction because what happens is a lot of stuff starts to sink. And if you're just tuning in, I'm going to give you a free PDF today. You're going to have that to download before this is over and look into it. And so all I ask is I'm going to drop that link in there. Grab the free PDF. Once I do, all I ask is that you fuel this channel with a donation or a super chat. Every donation has helped me keep building the resources for this mission. I put this together for you. Uh, it's going to be uh, free before this video is over. You'll have it, but you can see the links for PayPal, Cash App, Memo in the live chat, and you can do super chats as well. These are the zones right here where we're looking at liquefaction at. So liquefaction is when everything starts to sink. And we've got data about this liquefaction. We're going to be looking at roads. We're going to be looking at just buildings, cars, all these zones we're going to be looking at because this is going to be something that Cascadia is going to start to make commence. Now, if we look right here at California, only certain zones in Northern California would have the widespread liquefaction uh, because of this loose sand in the soils that's over there, we're looking next to this fault line is close to that crack. Mendocino Triple Junction is right there where a lot of these earthquakes are already hitting. It's Cascadia is right in that corner next to San Andreas. And that's the question people ask is like, will San Andreas also be another area that's affected? We're going to see because like once this one fault, if it, the earthquake hits on that zone, it very well could activate it. But if it hits other zones like an ocean a little bit farther and it's not right there, we could have a different scenario. But let's look at this right here. I'm going to read this to you. Predicted impacts. This is they're looking at of, of M9 event. It says 2,700, 2,755 kilometers of roads, 1,815 kilometers of rail, 837 bridges and eight ports will likely be rendered unavailable due to predominantly liquefaction considered only washington state infrastructure and look the shaking didn't stop either imagine you're in this scenario uh because after the shaking happens you no matter where you're in the world this is survival tactic you should think about the liquefaction actually slowly starts happening if you're in the zone like off the west coast after a 7.0 hit the bridge will slowly start sinking that's if it doesn't collapse right away before you exit the video the video that ties into this hugely they don't want you to see i'm telling you i put details that nobody has go watch it right now before it's too late